Hey guys, it's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all having a wonderful day as always. I want to talk to you about Ezra McCandless from Wisconsin. This is Ezra McCandless, or at least the Ezra McCandless that we have come to know during her trial. She tends to have different looks, often wearing pink with her hair pulled up or her hair down, wearing her glasses, but always with perfect makeup so that she looks like a very sweet, innocent, well put together young girl. She is actually considered gender fluid, which means that she can be feminine or masculine and has taken on both roles. But I think we need to talk about this Ezra, the Ezra that was arrested and booked for murdering a young man at the very beginning of his life. An Ezra that looks angry at the entire world. So I'm just going to dive right in and talk to you about her case. She was recently charged with murder for killing her then 24 year old ex-boyfriend by the name of Alex Woodworth. This is Alex Woodworth. From all accounts, he is known to be a sweet, funny, shy kid that has been a good friend to everyone and was studying philosophy with the hopes of becoming a philosophy professor. However, he had the misfortune of meeting Ezra McCandless while he was working at the coffee shop that everyone goes to, and that was where his life ended due to her. Now, if you haven't paid attention to this, and I, I've noticed that there hasn't been that much attention on this case, which I find very surprising because it's a crazy interesting case, but if you've been interested in following the Jody Aries case and things like that, I suggest you check out this case because it's very similar, obviously in the fact that she killed her ex-boyfriend, she used a knife, and she also made up some explanation of what happened that didn't co coincide with the evidence at all, also similar to Jody Arias, and she also had a blackout or fog. So I suggest you check out this case, but for now, I'm gonna tell you what I personally think happened. Ezra McCandless had broken up with Alex uh, about a month prior. She told him she didn't want anything to do with him anymore. She didn't want him to talk to her anymore because she had actually been cheating on her boyfriend at the time, Jason, with Alex, and that was the cause for some issues, and she just wanted to get him out of her life, which I believe is the basic motive for this murder. But on this day in March, a month after talking to him for the last time, she decided she needed to go back and return a bunch of his things. And by a bunch of his things that were apparently making her sad and were very important, I mean a heating pad and a bookmark. Yeah, he needed to have those. She couldn't just say, ah, but let's just throw them away because they remind me of him. She had to supposedly go see him for that. That was the main reason. And supposedly when she got there, he wanted to talk to her. So they decided they were going to go to a public place. And the reason they decided they were going to go to a public place, supposedly, was that they were in Alex's bedroom talking when they heard a phone ring outside the door. And come to find out, Jason, the other boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, whatever he was at the time, was standing there. And supposedly he had just walked in because he thought there might be something wrong. And the reason he did this was because earlier she had shown up at the coffee shop and she had seen him there. And he says that he thought her, she looked like she had red in her eyes, like something was wrong. And so he went there to check on them. He was kind of moseying around the location, kind of smoking cigarettes and I guess loitering across the street. So a bystander thought it was strange and ended up calling the police. So Jason was roaming around this location here, which is across the street from Alex's house. And so the police showed up and eventually talked to everyone. So you can see here, this is the police officer. And at the very left side, that is actually Alex. Um, you can see that uh, they talk for a little bit. Ezra's in her car. Jason is a little bit off. You can't see him in this picture. And then there's Alex walking around the car um, where he is heading over to the passenger side to get into the car, which is a huge mistake. And then finally, as the cops are gone, you see Jason pop back up. And now you see Jason staring down at Alex, it looks like. So when they all walked out of the house, surprise, there were police there. 
the police talked to all of them and got their information. They asked Ezra for an ID. And interestingly, she could not find her ID. She didn't know where her, she said she couldn't find it. So, so now the issue with the ID was actually brought up during the trial because it was actually right there in the center console. And the issue that the prosecution has is that they believed that when she was shuffling around in the console looking for her ID, which is right there on the bottom, that pink uh, enclosure there, that the knife is usually kept in the console, and she was concerned about them seeing that. Now, I don't actually believe that that's what the issue was. I think that it's because she didn't want to give her um, current ID because she, after the fact, tells the cops her previous name before she changed it to Ezra, which, which was Monica. And I believe she was trying to keep the cops from knowing that she's the same person that she talk, they talked to earlier. Basically trying to conceal her identity, which would allude to the fact that this was a planned attack from the beginning. It sounds like she gave them a different ID or what have you. They all gave their information and went on their way. The cops thought everything was fine. So supposedly, as far as both of them explain, Jason went somewhere else on his bike and Ezra and Alex took off in their car with Ezra driving and Alex on the passenger side. Um, they start driving. Ezra says that she got upset and decided to have Alex drive. I don't think that's the case because basically what happened was they end up in this random area, not in public at all, but actually in the middle of nowhere kind of where they end up going up this muddy hill and getting stuck. Here is the public place that they went to to talk. Now you can see that this is the most private location you could probably ask for. They go down this dirt road. They get uh, stuck in the mud here, supposedly. It does look like there was a little bit of issue there. They end up next to this little trailer here, and this is their car stuck in the mud. So Ezra's trying to pl play it off. Like, Alex was driving, Alex got in the car, and she's not the reason they got stuck in this non-public area, this very private area. Whereas, you know, the prosecution and I believe that she's the one who drove there. She drove there, luring him to his death. As she explains it, after going through all this crap of, you know, not being able to get the car out of the mud and blah, 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 and she's all anxious and what have you, she goes to lay down, and he ends up coming in and attacking her, and blindfolds, uh, takes off her glasses and blindfolds her. Even though she says she's completely blind without her glasses, she says that she was able to look through the blindfold a little bit and see what he was doing as he was tearing at her clothes, and she finds out that he's actually ripping up her clothes. So per Ezra's account, she is laying in this back seat when Alex comes to attack her. And you can see this shirt has some rips through the center. There's also the sweater that was outside of that shirt that has this tear across it. The pants have several marks in it. And then underneath the pants, she was wearing some leggings that also have the same mark. But she also had this tactical knife. And if you can see the little red part on the bottom of the handle, that is meant to cut material such as a seatbelt when someone is in an accident. So clearly that would be perfect for cutting these materials. So she could have easily done that to herself without any problem using that. But of course, in Ezra's defense, she says that it is Alex that is holding the knife, Alex that is using the knife to cut her clothes and eventually her skin. And he might be trying to rape her. And at first she was just going to let it go, but then she decides to start fighting back. So she fights back. She knees him. He drops the knife. And then she ends up stabbing him 15 times in the car and another time outside of the car. And the one outside of the car was extremely interesting because she says that after she had stabbed him 15 times, one of which was in his head, going through the temple bone, into the brain, actually into his brain, along with the other 14, another one of which was in his scrotum his side, his back, his neck. Um, she says he, he then finally got the picture that she was not going to let him attack, finally gets the picture and gets out and, you know, moves away from the car and starts stumbling around and then goes and stands over about 10 feet away by this trailer that happened to be there. Then she says she's calming down in the car. He's still over there standing there, still able to move and talk after 15 stab wounds. He asks her to please come over there and help him go to the bathroom. So she gets up and she goes to help him.
because he has to piss apparently and it's an issue for him even though he's been stabbed 15 times probably has half his blood gone has blood all over his clothes but god we don't want to accidentally pee on ourselves so we need help from the girl who just stabbed us 15 times totally possible <laughs> and fucking ridiculous anyway so she goes over there and she says as she goes to help him she gets close enough to where he attacks her again so he's holding her she takes the knife that she still has in her hand and she stabs him in the side then she runs away over to the side of the car and she stands over by the trunk where she watches him completely calm take off his coat that's on that didn't end up having any holes in it or not many and you can see it's alex's coat just underneath the door um to the car and I imagine that the plan they had was to um, put him on top of that coat and it was just impossible for them to do because of the way he was caught inside the door handle. So she assumed that that was going to happen and that's what makes me think that she had help. Because part of her testimony is that the last place that she saw Alex was when he put his coat down pretty much next to the trailer there and and then proceeded to lay down um on his coat by the trailer which clearly didn't happen because they found him inside the car and you would think that you'd want to get the car out of there so that they couldn't trace this murder back to you and that's what i think ezra's plan was to get him out of the car and get the car out of there but it didn't happen Dragging a body out of a car would be extremely heavy. And even they said just the stab to the um, skull would take a lot of force. So you would think that she would need some help. I don't know if she just had a great knife. She did have this tactical knife. Maybe it was her boyfriend Jason that was helping. Maybe this was one of those things where, okay, Jason ruined our relationship, or I'm sorry, Alex ruined our relationship. We're going to get rid of him so that we don't have to worry about it anymore. Because if you think about it, she went to the coffee shop and happened to run into Jason. And Here's the racy's coffee shop that everybody hangs out at. And these are the actual benches where Jason and Ezra met for the first time. If we go into the coffee shop, you can see it's very eclectic and interesting. Um, here we have... Um, one, one of the people that was on the witness stand, sitting on the couch, holding the dog. Dogs are allowed there, interestingly enough. And then here's another inside view. And if you see the man in the blue shirt on the, the bar stool, that is Alex Woodworth's um, roommate. And then, of course, we have on the, the bottom lower left-hand side is Jason talking to his friend. And if we blow the picture up, you get a big... Uh, decent sized profile view of Jason at the coffee shop where this all basically started from, if you ask me. Now they're all, apparently these guys are all hanging out at the coffee shop all the time, but she goes and runs into Jason. She says hi to him. She makes sure she pays and leaves the tip, which everybody said she doesn't normally do. So she's kind of laying the ground, the foundation for, I guess, her location, an alibi to a point. It's very strange that Jason just shows up at Alex's house, right? So I would think he showed up at Alex's house because he was going to be involved in killing Alex with her. But then it got screwed up because the cops showed up unexpectedly. So they had to rethink their plan. So I think that's when they decided, okay, he's gonna, we're going to take him to this other location. Regardless of how this happened, I think Jason was there. So that's my main situation here is that I think Jason was there. And... After she had done, after he had died, she ran off to go get help. She had the, his phone in her hand, but of course she dropped it and it broke. And she dropped the knife and she lost that and la la And then she forgot everything. Well, I think in this time frame, I think he was killed pretty quickly. And then they cleaned up. They were trying to clean up the mess, which is why they found him in the car. In the back. She said she lo she lo when she left, he was over on the grass there's not a lot of blood in the car the intention maybe was for him to be on the ground which is why she said that but initially he had ended up somehow he had ended up dead in the back seat of the car i think this somehow has to do with jason because what would be the point of her lying about where he ended up so either they had decided 
It looks like someone's trying to pull him out of the car and they can't get him out. You can't really tell, but his arm is actually locked in between the car door. So my guess is... So Jason's there. He's supposed to pull him out. His arm gets stuck so he can't get him out. And the reason they want him out is because they want to move the car away from the crime scene. So either they thought that it was going to be really easy to drag him out to where she says he is and Jason just wasn't able to do it or what. But the location of his body makes no sense with her story. And I mean, I understand she's lying, but it makes no sense to make yourself look worse by saying I left when he was on the ground, but then he must have walked back to the car because you found him in the car. That part confuses me, which kind of leads me to believe, for some reason, they wanted to say that he was over by the trailer. So they were going to drag him out of the car into over to the trailer, but it didn't get finished. So I don't know if that was what Jason was supposed to do. He couldn't do it because he tried to drag him and couldn't get him out. Or I don't know why. But I think that somehow this has to do with Jason being involved. Jason's showing up at Alex's house, very strange. I think she showed up at the coffee shop to give herself a little bit of an alibi that people saw her. She also went with her friend Max to give him a painting that she said she painted for him that she actually didn't paint for him. That was weird in itself. And then I think she showed up at the coffee shop because she didn't want to be calling Jason and leaving. She didn't want to leave evidence there that she's calling him. So she goes to the coffee shop where he's going to be. I think this was planned ahead. She goes to the coffee shop where she knows he's going to be. She, that, that's kind of the alert to him that, hey, we're going to get this ball moving now. We're going to get this, this plan in action now. And that's why he goes to Alex's house because the plan is he's going to go to Alex's house and he's going to be with her when they figure, when they go and kill him. And it got squashed a little bit because the police showed up. They didn't call the police. It was, it was a completely, um, it was a bystander that had nothing to do with this. So I think that's why he was at the, he was there. Who else, why, why else would he be just walking into this kid's house? He walked into the kid's house because they were going to kill this kid. I don't know what their plan was, but they were going to kill him. So it's really sad. I wonder what the cops think that went to the place to check on them and thought they were all good. And then three hours later, they find out that three hours later, this guy's dead, which by the way, they don't find it for a couple days, I think. And she doesn't admit anything until they've actually found him. But she says also, she says, so she says that he was ripping up her clothes and he thought, she thought, okay, he's, he's going to rape me. I'm just going to let it happen and then just get out of here. But then she also explains that, well, they, they actually use knife play, supposedly, in their sex routine. So that would explain why he thought he was going to be having sex with her. And then, so that's how I think he could, she could have lured him if they're doing the sex play thing with the knife. And then she starts killing him with the knife that he happens to have. That is her knife, by the way. There was a whole issue with her clothes being torn up. She said it was because he was cutting her clothes when he was attacking her. Again, it could just be that he was cutting her clothes because they were involved in the sex routine, or it could be that she cut the clothes herself. But regardless, that's, I, I feel like that's kind of irrelevant because she says that that was something they commonly did. So it kind of doesn't really matter. She's saying that that shows attack, but it doesn't show attack because we already know that supposedly, as far as at least she says, they did this normally. So it didn't matter. And then the main issue was that he had cut her up. He, when she really realized he was cutting her leg, that's when she freaked out that, okay, this is going a lot further than it used to, and he's going to maybe kill me. So there were cuts on her, on her leg, and I guess her vaginal area. I don't know. I, didn't, I don't know. They showed the part on her leg, and the, the doctor said there was no forced sexual contact, and every cut on her, every, every injury on her looked like it had been self-inflicted. The defense attorney went into a lot of detail about how she clearly was strangled because at the hospital there was a mark on her neck and then that it's ridiculous that the prosecution is trying to say that she did that to herself in the hospital. 
Well, and then they shouldn't have even shown the picture because you see the picture and it doesn't look anything like a strangulation mark. I mean, mind you, I'm not a big expert, but I've watched a lot of these and you've seen a lot of pictures. She had a mark that went, I'll show it. She had a mark that goes like right here. It basically looked like she had to scratch the shit out of herself for like 20 minutes and gave herself a mark. It wasn't around her neck like this. It was in one, one side right here, scratched up. See that mark? It literally looks like she just rubbed at her neck. It doesn't look like anything worse than that. And then she's got some marks on her face. Plus, on a side note, she doesn't look particularly traumatized by looking at the pictures of her injuries either. And actually, there's also pictures from the hospital prior to this when they take pictures of her facing forward, backwards, and the side where she has no marks at all. The cut on her leg, I'll show that to you as well, it was, all, it was sliced up. The cuts on her leg look somewhat bad when you see the dried up blood there, but if you were to wash that off and you just see the way the slices are, it's very superficial. As if someone did it themselves. And then also, she had written boy on her arm. She carved boy into her arm, as you'll see. There's the picture. She carved boy into her arm, but initially she said he did it. And then she later says, okay, you're right, I did it. So basically, she's already called herself out as being this huge liar. She called herself out as being a fucking psycho bitch. I'm sorry, she's crazy. She's such a weird person. And, which, I mean, whatever, to each his own. But she still, she came across very unlikable, very unlikable on the stand. She had no emotion. She was very strange. And she did not help herself. Why they put her on the stand is beyond me. She did not help herself. The evidence completely pointed towards her. And I'm just, I'm just surprised because, I mean, I do have a conspiracy theory type of mind, but... I'm surprised they didn't look further into this Jason situation. He was actually on the um, witness stand, and they never say anything about him possibly being part of this, even though I think there's some very definite signs. He was pissed about Alex, who he knew, um, sleeping with his girlfriend. He had talked to her about it. It had kind of ruined their relationship. He then is seen with her at that same day at the coffee shop. I know they all ha hang out at the coffee shop, but either, even, way, even still, they weren't really together at that time. But they talked a little bit. And then he shows up at the house and w lets himself right in. Um, he's like waiting around outside the house. I think he's waiting around outside the house because they're supposed to be killing this kid. Maybe he saw that somebody was watching him and decided he had to go in the house because he looked weird. Either way, that's a weird situation. And then after the cops came, he waited around. He stayed there like they were deciding where they're going to go. Um, and then they were seen kind of idling in the middle of the street. Was that because he was going to pop up? Maybe. And then a um, piece of evidence with regard to him is that, yeah, there was a slice that went through his head, so that through this guy's head so hard that it had to take serious force. This guy was in the military. She was a tiny little girl. It just seems plausible that he was there and it was a, it was a planned attack on both their parts. That's my idea. I don't know that that's true. I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility. Regardless, she got convicted. She's going to jail, hopefully for life. She destroyed this poor kid's life and he was only 24 and he seemed, he came across as like a really good guy, even though they tried to demolish him. So if you haven't seen it already, please look into it. It's a crazy case. It's very similar to Jody Arias. It gives me the Jody Arias vibe with all the things this girl did. But then also it kind of reminds me of that cadet killing where the guy cheated with this girl. So then they decided they had to kill her. It reminds me of that. So that's why I think Jason is involved. I might be overthinking this and that's definitely possible. I do that. But just let me know what you think. Do you think that there's a possibility that Jason was involved? Do you think that she planned this out? Do you think that it just happened? Um, do you think all the things she said about Alex were true with regard to his writing? You have to obviously watch about the case to know about that. Let me know what you think about all of this. And I guess that's it for now. I kind of went around in circles there, so I hope you kind of caught on to what I was saying. Basic gist, was Jason involved? Was Jason not involved? She definitely killed him. Did she kill him because she was set him up by pretending she was going to have sex with him and then didn't? Or did she just immediately attack him not not no sex involved at all um who knows but i just think maybe they missed a little bit there and maybe this dude jason who also was freaking weird has something to do with it but you know i feel bad for this alex woodworth 
and from Wisconsin, he got mixed in with this girl that was obviously unstable and he lost his life because of it. So let's focus on the victim also. I tend to go on and on about the, the guilty person, this crazy chick. But let's think about this Alex Woodworth, who was 24 when he lost his life because of this girl. All right, with all that said, thank you so much for watching, guys. Please like, share, and of course, please subscribe. And I can't wait to hear your comments. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. Bye.